This is the JFJ Easy Pro, a disc sander and buffer for taking scratch discs and making them probably more scratched, but in a way that your DVD drive or GameCube or Xbox can still read. Now, this has been on the market for a long time, maybe five years, maybe longer. And then that time it's turned out that there are some definite flaws in the system. I'm not going to talk about how to make it do a better job of resurfacing. I'm going to talk about making it do a better job of lasting. And the problems seem to come down to this funny piece of plastic here in the lid. The purpose of this piece of plastic is to hold a disc here, with the readable side up, and then press that into the resurfacing medium, be it a sanding disc or a buffing pad, that's going to sit on this thing here, which is then going to spin. And this thing here is made out of some kind of plastic that tends to crack. Now the reason why it's so complex is that it needs to be able to compress like that, so that when you close the lid, it makes tight contact with whatever the resurfacing material is there. So it can't just be a simple mechanism that holds the disc, it's gotta have that spring, and it's gotta have those arms that can make it move in just the right way. Now let's go look at one of these that's broken and see what the failure points are before we talk about what you might be able to do to improve upon the reliability. So on this side we have what looks to be a okay set of mechanisms. But if you look on the other side, we'll see that things are not so good. So it's cracked and come completely loose in two places. Probably where the failure started is along here, which used to go roughly like that. And the purpose of that piece of plastic was to hold this and this. Those are arms that the system rotates around. Now I think what happened is that when this particular unit failed there, when this cracked, so much force was placed on this thing here, which you'll notice no longer spins true, that it wrenched this piece apart. Because I haven't seen those fail before. And by the way, my source information here is looking at ones that people put on eBay for parts. So in those, I've seen pretty much all of them fail in this same set of places. So the problem is it's cracking here. And the question is, what can you do about it? Well, as it turns out, although it might look like there needs to be a whole bunch of flexibility here, a lot of these parts don't actually move. So if we press this thing down, you'll notice that those round parts are static. They're there so that these arms can rotate around them. So we don't have to keep these guys able to rotate. We just need to make sure this piece of plastic right behind them can. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I reinforce that. Just a quick reminder, this is what it looks like from the factory, or at least from the factory after you've used it a few times. And the problem is that the part that we're looking at there tends to crack. It's got too much stress on it. So we want to do something to reinforce that. And here is, in fact, one that has been reinforced. Now, when I purchased this unit, it already had some cracks in it. Let's see if we can find evidence of those. Yes, right there, you can see the crack. So that crack ran all the way from the spot that you can see it to the base. This side didn't have any cracks, so what I'm saying is it ran from up here all the way down to there. And I've seen that before. I think that's a common stress point that fails on these. So I wanted something I could use to reinforce that. And I don't know what the ideal thing is, but I had in my possession some of this. Now this is interesting. It's not glue exactly. It actually partially dissolves the plastic uh, and then uh, puts down a layer of more plastic on top of it. And it's meant for uh, doing plumbing like irrigation or maybe even um, in the home. This stuff comes out black and very goopy. And you can see 
what it looks like when it dries. It takes a while to dry, um, but you can what you can do is you can paint a layer on, wait for it to harden, which uh, it will take quite a while, but maybe uh, 12 hours to completely harden, but maybe just a minute to stop flowing. Uh, and then you can add another layer. I think what I did is I did this over the period of two or three days and I just splashed a whole lot of it on there. And so the nice thing about it is it binds really well to this plastic. It sort of partially dissolves it just a little bit. So it might actually weaken the white plastic just a tad, but at the same time, it also forms a really good bond to it. And then if you put enough on top of it, whatever weakening of the white plastic is more than made up of by the new layers of this black stuff. And this is like $4 at Home Depot. Now, it's obviously very important we do this, and I think this is most uh, mostly taken care of in the first application. It's very important that none of this black gunk that you're putting on here, this hard plastic when it's set, gets through and into this gap here, because this is the arm that the whole thing rotates on. And if that gets frozen in place, you've just ruined your JFJ. So what you want to do is put on just a tiniest little bit to sort of seal around these parts here. Remember, this part doesn't actually have to rotate. It's allowed to be completely constant, but you don't want any of this black cement to seep in behind here, go through, and then get to here. So very, very light touch on your first application to seal it. And then you can go heavy. Uh, and I, as you can see, I did this on both sides. This side's a little harder to uh, parse visually because it's got a lot of the buffing pad uh, ground onto it. I have used this now for a decently large number of discs and I've seen absolutely no evidence that that crack's getting any larger nor have I seen any evidence that my layer of cement is starting to come loose. So I think this is a successful repair, not only of a piece that was cracked and going on the way towards failing catastrophically like the other JFJ I showed you, but also to reinforce a piece that was still okay, but probably going to fail at some point in the future. Before I go, I want to show you one other spot that I've seen failures. This line here, or the corresponding line on the opposite side, sometimes cracks. And I think you could do the same treatment that I've done on that. It wouldn't hurt anything. It's a lot harder to get to the other side. Uh, and I haven't done anything because I see absolutely no evidence of cracking yet. Uh, but I am worried about it, and I am keeping an eye on it probably a good idea to inspect your machine after every 10 or so discs just to see if there's any new cracks forming. In the whole, for a device that costs $100 to $200, it's really disappointing how the design hasn't changed at all in five years and is still prone to failure. But with a little bit of preventive maintenance, uh, you should be possible to extend the life for a good while. So I just wanted to finish with a quick note, which is to say that I've tried two different sorts of plastic cement called medium black ABS cement, and then this all purpose cement that's for PVC, C PVC and ABS. And you might think that all purpose might be preferable, but in my fairly limited testing, it seems like it was softer and not as adhering as well as this ABS cement. So I think, if I was going to do it again, I would definitely use the ABS only cement. That's not to say there isn't something that's preferable to both. And if anyone has any ideas of what that might be, I'd love to hear it. Furthermore, if you have had failures with your JFJ that you've been able to fix or not fix, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. So please start a conversation.